Welcome to part 2 of my Fluxgate Generator video. Though it was my most popular video to date, it also received the most negative feedback. In this follow-up, I'd like to present more comprehensive comparison demonstrations between a normal generator and this Fluxgate generator. For some reason, a few viewers misunderstood my last video as promoting a free energy scam, even though I clearly stated that it was not an over-unity device. What I'd like to impress upon you is how unique this generator is, and how strange its properties are when compared to normal generators. Let me show you what I mean. Here is a very basic representation of a generator. It's essentially a large coil of wire with a permanent magnet rotor. As the rotor spins, the magnetic field lines induce an alternating voltage in the wire. I will spin the rotor with an identical DC motor that I use to spin the flux gate. The black power supply indicates the input voltage to the DC motor. Watch what happens when I short the generator coils. The DC motor draws 9.4 amps and the RPMs drop drastically. This is due to counter electromotive force, or back EMF. It's an outcome of electromagnetic induction, where a coil in a magnetic field generates voltage. As this coil, carrying current, creates its own magnetic field, it opposes the original field. Essentially, more mechanical energy is needed to maintain output as electrical load increases, due to counter EMF's balancing act. Now, I've added a full bridge rectifier to convert AC into DC for testing the 775 motor. The effects remain consistent. It's crucial to understand back EMF when loading a generator. This understanding sets the stage for the contrast you'll observe when I conduct the same test with the flux gate generator. Pay close attention to how the back EMF influences the system's behavior, as it's a key factor differentiating conventional generators from the unique properties of the flux gate. Let's try a bigger DC motor. I hope these demonstrations have helped you understand why, for an example. Diesel generators increase their idle speed when powering a load. This is to overcome the back electromotive force, or back EMF, in order to meet the load demand. The generator's response, by idling up, compensates for the energy required to counteract this back EMF and maintain stable power supply to the load. Let me clarify once again. The flux gate generator is not a free energy or over unity device, and it's not even my invention. The closest reference I can find is on Wikipedia, where they are termed flux switching alternators. These are designed for high RPM operation. I'm currently redesigning a version more akin to this one, with six poles on the rotor. The coil arrangement in my design aims for a more symmetrically alternating current. I've made some modifications since my last video. This OptiTiming disc controls the DC motor with the aid of a pulse width modulator and a capacitor dump to extract flyback spikes from the DC motor. I've rewound my coils with fewer turns of bifolar wire, which consists of two wires twisted together and connected in parallel to generate more amps. There's not a substantial difference when I attach the load, just a few hundred milliamps. I need to turn up this PWM. However, the input current actually drops when I short out the generator coil. Now watch the input current on the black power supply when I load the motor. Let me add an amp meter to show you the power demand on the flux gate when I load the motor. Pay close attention to how the back EMF decreases as the demand increases.
As you can see, this demonstrates a strange behavior in contrast to conventional generators. I'm not getting more out than in, but I believe this is a unique design worth exploring. And to be honest, I'm glad I have one to tinker around with. Let's try this big scooter motor. fascinating piece of technology with unique characteristics that distinguish it from conventional generators. Remember, it's not about getting more out than in, but about understanding the intriguing principles of physics at play. In the next video, I'll be taking this a step further by powering the initial conventional setup with the Fluxgate generator. It's an experiment you won't want to miss. If you found this video informative and enjoyed the demonstrations, please hit the like button and share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech deep dives and experimental projects. Thanks for watching, and keep experimenting and exploring the amazing world of electronics and 3D printed designs.